What's going on, everyone? Andy Singer from the Heartland Institute bringing you another report from climaterealism.com. So before I actually get into what I want to talk about today, I got two, I guess, housekeeping notes for you all. Number one, if you haven't gone to climaterealism.com, I'll keep this quick. Just check it out. It's great. A lot of what I do comes from there. Everything's got like sources backing up all the information. We link to all the places where the information comes from. You can learn a lot there. Number two, uh, and this is just coming straight from me. I appreciate you all. Uh, everyone that's been commenting on the YouTube videos or Facebook or whatever um, with nice things. Seriously, I read all of it and it makes me happy. Uh, for those of you that are giving me criticism, I actually appreciate that too. I, I read it all and I try to incorporate what you say. I've been doing that since the start. But um, I didn't really expect to be doing these videos very long, but you all that keep watching and keep commenting are the reason I'm here and I'm going to keep doing this for a while. So uh, I just want to say thank you. But OK, so the article I want to talk about, that's enough for housekeeping. Let's get into what we actually want to talk about. So, yeah, today I want to talk about uh, Boston's NPR affiliate, an article they put out. And this is kind of a mouthful and it sounds weird and I could not memorize it. So I'm going to read it off a piece of paper titled 28 trillion ton ice melt spells danger for sea level rise climate change. Okay, so the article goes pretty much how you'd expect. It says essentially that sea level rise is accelerating to a catastrophic degree. It says that it's primarily anthropogenic, so humans are causing it. And it says that we need to adjust our lifestyle to combat this. And number three, the adjust our lifestyle is the most important point. And I'm going, I'm going to rant about that later, but I'll, we'll save that part for later. But for now, before we actually get into what I am going to call a rant, because I will be ranting is some charts that actually show what's going on with sea level. Check out the first. So you're looking at the results of tidal reading gauges at the battery in New York City since the 1850s, 1860s, somewhere in that range. I ask you, does it look like sea level is rising? Yes, of course. Does it look like it's accelerating? No, no, it does not. I already know what some of you will say. You'll say, well, Andy, you're just talking about one area in New York City. Like, let's talk about a greater area. I agree. Let's do it. Okay, so this chart you're looking at is global sea level rise from 1880 to 2013 from tide gauge data. And thank you to Dr. Roy Spencer for this chart. So what you can see here is that sea level has been rising, but around the year 1950, there was a slight uptick. And, you know, that is a that is a noticeable uptick. But the clear part is that it's nothing runaway or anything catastrophic. There may be a slight uptick, but it's nothing that's going to doom humanity. Okay, so that's there. But I want to just show one more chart before we move on. So what you're looking at now is NASA satellite measurements from 1995 to 2020 for global mean sea levels with seasonal signals removed. So essentially, you can see that from the year 1995 until present day, that sea level rise has been linear. It's been consistent. It's not accelerating in any way. OK, so there's the main charts I wanted to show you all. So you can see that sea level rise is not just going to any great degree. It is occurring. And there may have been a slight uptick around the year 1950, but it's not like it was anything incredibly drastic. But there's really four major points I want you to take away from this video. And I'll put these in the comments so you can copy them, send them to whoever you want to, or just keep them for your own, you know, use. But let's start. Point number one, global sea level has been rising since at least the mid 1800s. And data shows there's only been minor recent acceleration. That's what we just looked at with the 1950 minor uptick. Point number two. NASA satellite instruments with readings dating back to 1993 show global sea level rising at a pace of merely 1.2 inches per decade. So if you hear reports in the mainstream media about how it's four inches per decade or something like that, they're probably just looking at an isolated area, which actually brings me to number three. <laughs> isolated locations with more accelerated sea level rise reflect local conditions, such as tectonic plate movement and withdrawing underground freshwater reserves rather than climate change. So yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Just don't trust like one small area, one tidal gauge. You got to look at the entire picture. But point number four, and point number four is the most important point. And point number four is the point I'm going to end up ranting about. Human civilizations successfully dealt with sea level rise utilizing 19th and 20th century technologies, and will be able to adapt to rising sea levels even more successfully in the coming decades by utilizing 21st century technologies. Yeah, of course. Now, before I actually rant about this, I do want to read one more or actually two more paragraphs from this NPR article and get into them. So here they are. The report comes in the middle of an unprecedented pandemic and residual economic collapse across the world. Shepard says the experience of 2020 has taught people that they can adapt their lifestyles, which means similar measures could be taken to slow down climate change. And here's a quote. We've learned through this natural experiment that the world doesn't end when we change our lifestyles. 
and we can continue and be prosperous, he says. And so it's been a little bit of a fortunate experiment because people can't say now that we can't adapt to climate change. Are you freaking kidding me? I, I, I do not know how you could say that with a straight face. Okay, let, let's be clear about what's happening in the world right now. There are rioting in the streets. People are protesting across the globe due to lockdowns. The, uh, the suicide rates are up. The rates of depression are up. And to be honest, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just tell you my own opinion here. I think part of the rioting in the streets has to do with people being cooped up for so long inside their houses. I just, I don't think humans were meant to just stay inside, isolated from the world for just excessively long periods of time. And I think that has led to some of this radical behavior we're seeing. But more than that, I sometimes feel like climate alarmists just try to pretend that we do not have the capability to adapt at all. I feel like they'll say, oh, sea level is just rising a little bit more and everyone's going to die that lives like that, that will get engulfed by like the rising seas. And that's just not true. I mean, as as we've said, in the 19th and the 20th centuries, we already adapted to these kinds of things. And our technology and our wealth as a society is drastically greater than it was in the past. The idea that if there's modest sea level rise, that it's going to be some catastrophic event is frankly absurd. And I genuinely think that climate alarmists sometimes just pretend that that we we have no ability to adapt and that they hope that their their like audience just does not think like that. It just thinks, oh, there's a problem. We got to stop this instead of, oh, there's a problem we can adapt. And, you know, I've really thought about this in one major way most of my life, and it comes down to air conditioning. So I'm going to throw a hypothetical out to you. Let's say that air conditioning units across the United States do raise uh, the mean temperatures a small degree. Does that mean we should stop using air conditioning? No. No, it doesn't. If anything, I mean, they're dealing like they were recently dealing with a heat wave in California and blackouts from it. Do you think that during a heat wave, you know, stopping all use of air conditioning to maybe combat temperature rise is the right move? Because I think that's crazy. If anything, we should you know, celebrate the fact that we've adapted to our climate. And what we do as humans and what we've done for our entire history is adapt to the climate. There's literally a reason why if you're stuck out in the jungle, one of the first things you do is build a shelter. Because we are just we're, we're, we are not like capable of just dealing with the raw wild on its own. We adapt and we improvise and we improve. We get wealthier and we, we deal with the problems that we have. And sea level rise is, is something that is occurring, but we can't greatly control. We might, the, the minor uptick might be due to humans, but even if it is, that doesn't mean we should change what we're doing because you have to consider the cost of changing what, what we are doing. And it's probably greater than the cost of adapting. All right, before I keep going, I should probably, I should probably call this one. <laughs> I'm just ranting at this point. But uh, yeah, so that's Andy Singer from the Heartland Institute. Keep checking out these videos. Again, I'll reiterate myself. I really appreciate all of you that are commenting on the YouTube that are watching this. Uh, you're the reason I keep going. Till tomorrow, peace. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and consider donating to the Heartland Institute to support more vibrant free markets, greater individual liberties, and more videos like this one.